Up uh, my senior year in high school. Turned around as quickly as possible. Give us okay. about 15 seconds of room tone so I can do noise reduction uh, starting now. Level, check one, two. Check one, two. Okay, sounding good. I'm check just, two. Sounds terrific. I'm going to give us okay. about 15 seconds of room tone so I can do noise reduction uh, starting now. All right, I think that should be plenty. And uh, just so you know, uh, I, I, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but we're going to get it uh, turned around turned around as quickly as possible. possible um if you want to stop and tom welcome to the quantum leap tom welcome to the quantum leap podcast thanks for having me well you played blake's sycophantic yes man calloway welcome to the quantum leap podcast the Quantum Leap podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, you played Bl Thanks for having me. 
Well, you played Blake's sycophantic yes man Callaway. Well, you played Blake's sycophantic yes man Callaway in the classic Christmas episode, A Little Miracle. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got started acting and what led to getting that role on Quantum Leap? Uh, Well, uh, I got... On Quantum Leap. Uh, Well, uh, I got into acting in uh, college. I had done a workshop uh, my senior year in high school uh, with a an improv group in Seattle and I really enjoyed it. So I went, uh, when I went to college, um, theater was sort of on my mind, but I wasn't taking any theater classes. And then my English teacher suggests I audition for a role that was available in Equus, which the college was producing. And I auditioned for, uh, the role of Alan Strang, which was the lead character uh, in this show, and I got it. That's that's um, that's a heavy role it, <laughs> for your first time out. That's a really yeah, heavy right? role, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, and and you know, I, I got it. That's 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 a heavy role. Oh, and I got it. That's 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 a heavy role <laughs> for your first time out. That's a really yeah, heavy right? role, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, you know, uh, when you're new at any, and, yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, when you're new, yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, when you're new at anything, you sort of, um, you don't really know what you're, what you're jumping into. But I, I knew it had a nude scene in it. So when they told me I got the role, which is a plum role, uh, I said, okay, I'll let you know in a couple of days. Uh, <laughs> their jaws <laughs> sort of hit the floor. And then uh, I'll let you know in a couple of days. Uh, <laughs> their jaws I'll let you know in a couple of days. Uh, their jaws I'll let you know in a couple of days. I'll let you know in a couple of days. Uh, their jaws <laughs> sort of hit the floor and then, um, their jaws <laughs> sort of hit the floor. And then, um, I called my mom and I said, Hey mom, I got the part in this production and, and it's a good part, but it's got a nude scene in it. So I don't know if I want to do it. What do I do? And, and you know, my mom was really bright and she said, just get a piece of paper and draw a line down the middle of it. And on one side, write the good things that could come of it, and on the other side, write the bad things that could come of it. And the only bad thing I could come up with was that people would laugh and point at my dick. So I was <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> All right, I don't care. Um, and and I loved it. I did the, I did the show, and I loved it was that people would laugh and point at my dick. So I was <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> All right, I don't care. Um and and I loved it. I did the I did the show and I loved it and it was uh, well received criti- critically. And then I <clears throat> sort of declared theater as a sort of sort of declared theater as a major and did that for and point at my dick. So dick. So dick. So dick. My dick side <laughs> would laugh and point at my dick side. <laughs> like, okay, all right, I don't care. Um, and and I loved it. I did the I did point at my dick side. <laughs> like, okay, all right, I don't care. Um, and and I loved it. I did the I did the show and I loved it and it was uh, well received criti- critically and then I sort of declared theater as a major and did that for two years. And at that point I was pretty sure I wanted to be an actor. So at that point, and at that point I was pretty sure I wanted to be an actor. So I moved to New York and studied at, uh, uh Herbert Berghoff studios. Uh, 
<clears throat> excuse me, in New York, <coughs> in New York, in New York, <coughs> and then got homesick, and uh, and then got in New York, and then got homesick. And then got homesick, and um, came. And then got homesick, and um, came home about a year and a half later, and and uh, just started working the regional. And then got homesick, and then got homesick, and um, came home about a year and a half later, and and uh, just started working the regional. Regional theater in Seattle and regional working the regional regional theater in theater in Seattle and theater in working the regional theater in Seattle and um, working the regional theater in Seattle and um, uh, and that's Seattle and um, uh, and that's that's how it happened. I, I that's how it happened in Seattle, and that's how it in the regional theater in Seattle, and that's how it happened. I, I part of my rationale for for starting the regional theater in Seattle, and that's how it happened. I, I part of my rationale for for starting profession working the regional theater in Seattle, and that's how it happened. I, I Part of my rationale for, for starting professionally in Seattle was because it was a much less competitive environment, so I was able to uh, get my union cards and <clears throat> start, <clears throat> start working with start working cards and start working a little bit more quickly than I would have had I been had I been I would have had I been, you know, competing in New York. Understood. Well, when you wrote down the pros and the cons, New York. Understood. Well, when you wrote down the pros and the cons, understood. Understood. Well, when you New York. Understood. Well, New York. Understood. Well, when you wrote down the pros and the cons of doing Equus, was one of the cons, aside from people pointing and laughing, that, you know, everybody you know and maybe people in your family would see you in the all together? Is, I, and I ask that because I know <clears throat> actors, that they, they have to sort of face that as part of what they do for a living. And how do you reconcile those things? It, to me, it just seems, it seems like it, dicey. It would be dicey. <laughs> Well, it was, I mean, it would be dicey. <laughs> well, it was, I mean, it's it's weird to be naked in front of a. <laughs> well, it was, I mean, it's it's weird to be naked in front of a room full of clothed people. But the weirdest part about it is becoming naked. Once you're nude, it doesn't matter. You know, it's all England out. There. For everybody to see and Jeff and admire or not, you know, um, getting it is really hard because you see, getting it is really hard because you know it's all England out for everybody about it is becoming naked. Once you're naked once you're nude. Getting naked. Getting naked. Um, getting naked. Admire or not, you know. Um, getting naked. Really hard because. Getting naked, you know. Getting naked. Really hard because you. See really hard. You know, getting naked really hard because you sense the anticipation of the audience, you know. So going from clothed to unclothed is a tough transition. Naked really hard. 
clothed to unclothed is a tough transition, but one is it is really hard. Getting naked is really hard because you sense the anticipation of the, is a tough transition, but once you're unclothed, it's like, eh, whatever, you know, here okay. I am. <laughs> um, and I didn't, I didn't care whether my family saw me or not. I mean, I knew that the body of that play was so solid <clears throat> that, you know, that, that so solid that was so solid that you know it, the play is the thing and 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 uh the nude scene was you know incidental to the to the rest of the show so I got rest incidental to the rest of the show so rest incidental to the rest of the rest of rest of the show down to the rest of the show so i got you i got you, you. Know. it wasn't it wasn't like i was doing a, a stage adaptation of deep throat <laughs> <laughs> you know where, where it was pretty nude pretty much all the time it was just a scene in a in a much larger body of work so i got you well let's steer it back to the family friendly we're talking about a, a christmas episode of work so I got you. Well, let's steer it back to the family friendly. We're talking about a, a Christmas episode, right? <laughs> how did, sure, how did, right. How, yeah. how did you go from uh, <laughs> from from Seattle to L.A. and uh, what was the process of getting work from uh, from from Seattle to L.A. and uh, what was the process of getting work on TV in the nineties? I guess in the eighties at that point too. How did how did you uh, how did you how did you break in and how did you uh, wind up wind up with uh, with how did you? Yeah, uh, how I, did you? How did you break in, and how did you uh, wind up? Wind up with uh, with QL. Well, uh, with QL. Well, when I was uh, living in Seattle uh, and working in regional theater, I had I discovered stand up more as a fan than as a comedian. I just I wandered into a comedy club, and I I think at that point I was very broken hearted from a relationship very at that point I was very broken point I was very broken hearted from a I think at that point I was very broken hearted from a relationship that had gone south and I wandered into this stand up comedy club and for an hour and a half I was transported. You know, I forgot about my broken heart and my betrayal and all you know, I mean it was just sort of this magical thing. So I became something of a comedy groupie, just hanging around comedians and talking to them and, you know, wanting to know how they did this incredible thing they did. And then I started writing for them and then I started performing. Um, and uh, after about, and, Um, and uh, after about oh gosh, and then I started performing, and uh, after about oh gosh, I don't know four. And and uh, after about oh gosh, I don't know, four or five years of doing stand up. In Seattle, I felt like I was ready to be seen on a larger stage, so I uh, moved to Los Angeles and moved to 
for the stage. So I moved to Los Angeles. And shortly after moving to Los Angeles, I met a, another comic who said, who's your agent? And I said, I don't have an agent. And he said, well, call my agent. You're great. So I called his agent and uh, uh, they signed me that day and they signed and uh, they signed me that day and, and from that agent I got another agent and then you know, stand up comedy is a really good way to showcase yourself mm -hmm. uh, to a you know to a larger to a larger self. Uh, good way to showcase yourself to a larger uh, group of people than, than simply group to a larger group of people than, than simply being an actor is sometimes, you know? Um, so for me, uh, stand, so for me sometimes, you know, so for me, stand up. So for me, stand up was a way to get agents. And once I got agents, I got auditions and, that was one of the auditions that the quantum audition was one of the auditions I went on and was lucky enough to get the part. But, you know, it's interesting looking back on it because at the time, I mean, quantum leap was a fairly successful show, but it wasn't what it is today in terms of, uh, really devoted, really in terms of really devoted following of, uh, really devoted following. Um, I was working in Vegas, uh, I don't know, six, I was following. I was working in Vegas, uh, I don't know, six months ago, I don't know, in Vegas, I don't know, six months ago, and one Vegas, I don't know, six months ago, and one of the guys that I was working with said, can we just have lunch? I just want to talk to you about, you know, what you've done. And I said, One of the guys that I was working with said, can we just have lunch? I just want to talk to you about, you know, what you've done. And I said, sure. And I guess overnight he Googled me and up popped Quantum Leap. And all he wanted to talk about for the entire lunch was me being on Quantum Leap. He was like a rabid Quantum Leap fan. And uh, that was my first and rabid Quantum Leap and uh, rabid Quantum Leap and Abed Quam, and uh, that was my my first Quam. Abed Quam, and my first. even awareness that there was this yeah. you know, really devoted following to this show that I did so many years ago, you know, but, uh, that episode seems to, seems to hold up. Uh, that many years ago, you know, but that episode seems to, seems to hold up, up in the, you know, but that episode seems to, so it seems to, seems to uh, seems to hold up and they show it every year because I get about 18 cents <laughs> I know it's running. well tell us tell us um, what the audition process was like and uh, if if you don't mind you know your time on the set I know you got to work with Scott <laughs> and also extensively with your fellow I know you got to work with Scott and also and also work with Scott and also work with Scott and also extensively with your work with Scott and work with Scott and also extensively with your fellow guest star Charles Rocket so uh so so dish yeah, I know um, I don't remember the uh, 
so so dish i don't remember the audition process and i don't remember booking the job so dish i don't remember the audition process and i don't remember booking the job i remember being on the set and doing all right we can start from there booking the job i remember being on the set and doing it all right we can start from there and uh yeah it was just kind of fun you know i mean at that point i yeah it was set and doing it yeah it was just and the set and doing it and yeah it was just kind of fun you know i mean at that point i hadn't done a lot of work so uh i was on a big sound stage and scott bacula was an incredibly nice guy um uh, dean was uh dean was incredibly nice guy dean was uh incredibly nice guy dean was uh a little bit more reserved and um and Charlie Rocket, I and and Charlie a little bit more reserved. And Charlie Rocket, I'd known because he had done work on uh, Saturday Night Live, and and now was simply just plying, you know, his acting chops in L.A. And so we'd we'd cross paths on auditions and things, um, and. Um, and um and um we actually knew each other for years uh post that and post other for years post that in l a it was sort of a a way for us to become friends you know um and then he died you know and then for us to become friends you know and then he died you know you know, and then friends, you know, and then he died. You know, you know, mm. you knew that. Yes, I guess through your research, um, which is really uh, tragic. I mean, it was just really sad the way he went out. But you know, you know, mm. you knew that. I guess through your research, um, which is really uh, tragic. I mean, it was just really sad the way he went out, but um, which is really uh, tragic. I mean, it was just really sad the way he went out, but, which is really, I guess through your research, which is really, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you knew that, I guess through your research, which is really, I do you know, you know, mm -hmm. you knew that. Which is really uh, tragic. I mean, it was just really sad the way he went out. But good guy. And so on the set for, I'm going to say four, four days, something like that. And shoot some here and go back to your trailer and shoot some there and go back to your trailer. And, and uh, it was just a lot of fun, you know. But yeah. I, I, as as I mentioned in an early, I, I as a. As I, but as I mentioned, in, you know, but as, but as I mentioned in an e earlier uh, phone conversation, you know, it's mentioned in an e earlier uh, phone conversation, you know, it's so many years ago, conversation, you know, conversation, you know, it, you know, it's, you know, it's so many years ago, and it was. But, you know, it's so many years ago. And it was a small part. I, when I was first, I, when, when, I, when I, When I was first approached, I was like, God, what did I even do on Quantum Leap? <laughs> so I had to go back and watch the episode. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I remember that. that was great. Watch the episode. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I remember that. That was great. Um, 
but it's it's a long but it's but it's But it's it's a long time. But it's it's a long time ago, you know, so my recollections are not fresh. Well, that, that's fine. I mean, and that's not uncommon with uh, many of the actors. Well, that, that's fine. I mean, and that's not uncommon with uh, many of the actors we talk to. It's understandable, too, because it's a job you did, what, 30 years ago for a couple of days, and you've moved on, and, you know, there's a whole contingent of uh, fanboys and girls that haven't. So we're going to pick your brain, and we'd love to hear what you have to say anyway. Um, okay. I just wanted to, if you can remember a little bit about the dynamic, because one of the things this show Anyway. Okay. I just wanted to, if you can. Re anyway. Okay. I just wanted to. What you have to say anyway. Okay. I just wanted to, if you can remember a little bit about the dynamic, because one of the things that struck me about A Little Miracle was it was ostensibly the Christmas Carol episode, right? But right. your your scenes with Charles and with Scott were some of the funniest in the entire series, and. I don't know that it was written that way, or if you guys just played off that played off of each other. Now. It's just played off that played off played off that played off of each other naturally. That played off of if you guys just played off of each if you guys just played off of each other naturally that way because I know that naturally that way because I know that Charles had a comedic background. You're a comedian and. Scott seemed to be, you know, killing it in, in those scenes. Is that something that you recall, like, discussing and bringing to those scenes because of your background, or was it just there on the page and you were able to enact it? I, mean, I, th I think it was on the... I think it was on... Acted him. I think it was on the. <clears throat> I think it was on the page. <clears throat> I think it was on the page. I think it was on the. Able to enact it. I think it was on the page, and if it wasn't on. The, I think it was on the page, and if it wasn't on the page, it was certainly in the the producers' minds uh, that they wanted it to be sort of that at least that relationship to be sort of tongue in cheek. The the sort of um, overworked, underappreciated, overworked, the sort of overworked, underappreciated uh, assistant who always had big ideas and was assistant appreciated assistant who always had big ideas and was full of aspirations and Charles would always shoot me down and and. Um, you know, and and Scott was Scott has great comedic timing anyway. Um, you know, and and Scott was Scott has great comedic. Scott has, you know, and, and um, you know, and Scott has great comedic timing anyway. And and um, you know, and Scott has great comedic timing anyway. I mean, he's one of those effortless guys that you, you, you watch his work in that series and in other things over the years. And he's just so easy on things over the years. And he's just. over the years and he's just so easy on screen you can see why he became the success that he did but i i'm sure that the reason that i was hired for that was uh because of comedic because for that was because of comedic 
uh, my word for that was because of comedic, uh, my comedic skills and was because of comedic, 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 uh, my comedic, my comedic was because of my comedic skills and probably something because of my comedic skills and probably something comedic that I brought to that audition uh, that maybe other people that audition that maybe other people didn't see in the script. That was it's pretty much why I get hired. You know? Right, right. Well, <laughs> because people people write phone books and I read it in a specific. I remember going in for an audition for a soap opera, and they were howling, and it was it was basic dry soap opera stilted dialogue and they thought it was hilarious and they went thanks that was one of the best auditions we've ever seen you're not right for this part <laughs> and, uh, oh, you know, hollywood right <laughs> yeah you know so you know you kind of yeah you know so yeah you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hollywood, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, so you know, you kind of you go with your strengths and and I'm really pleased that that it uh, turned out that way, you know. Uh, Charles had great timing, and, you know. Uh, Charles had Charles had way, you know. Uh, Charles had great. Charles had great timing and he was a fun foil to work with. Um, and, uh, Scott the same way. You know? Yeah. Well, um, if we can branch out a little bit, I mean, you went from a uh, Christmas in New York. Well, um, um, if we can branch, if we can, yeah, well, if we can branch out a little bit, I mean, you, went, yeah, well, if we can branch out a little bit, I mean, you went from a uh, Christmas in New York on quantum leap to eternal summer on Baywatch where you had a regular role as Harvey Miller. So what was it like to be on, you know, the hottest show of the nineties? Um, it was fun. You know, I, it was, uh, nineties. Um, it was fun. You know, I, it was, uh, a little bit thankless as an actor, you know, as an actor, an actor, this is an actor. An actor, you know, because um, you go into any project thinking I'm going to bring you go in you know because you go into any project thinking you go in because you go into any project thinking i'm going to bring value to this project and on 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 baywatch you were uh exposed really quick exposed really quickly exposed really quickly to the idea that you weren't the star that tna was the star so you'd spend <laughs> you know you'd spend they'd spend 10 minutes, you know, you, you rehearse a scene and then you'd block the scene and then they'd shoot the scene and they'd go, get it. Great. Check the gate moving on. And then they'd spend two hours fluffing, you know, fluffing boobs and making sure bathing suits were as high cut as they possibly could be and doing close ups on, you know, sweat trickling down somebody's cleavage and it, you know, <clears throat> so it was, um, <clears throat> so, so it was, um, but it was, it was fun. It was good. 
but it was you know, but it was it was fun it was good uh good experience and david hasselhoff was a really nice guy to work with um and uh yeah you got to go to the beach every day and it was a regular paycheck and uh, Nice guy to work with, and uh, yeah, you got to go to the beach every day, and it was a regular paycheck, so yeah. that was fun. You can't you can't get much better than that, and you get to hassle the Hoff, right? So there's something. Right, so there's something to be said. Yes, there's a video somewhere of me tweaking his nipples. I I don't off right so. Yes, there's a video somewhere of me tweaking his nipples. I I don't right so. Yes, there's a video somewhere of me tweaking his nipples. I I don't know where that is, but it's out there somewhere. Uh, I'm sure that the the outtakes from Baywatch there might be some some pretty funny, pretty racy stuff. It's a whole different world from Quantum Leap, huh? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's not. It it wasn't terribly serious. Baywatch them leave huh right right yeah it's not it, it wasn't terribly serious leave, huh? them leave, huh? right right yeah it's not it, it wasn't terribly serious yeah it's not it, it wasn't terribly right yeah it's not it, it wasn't terribly serious they watched it not take itself uh as seriously as it appeared to uh, on the screen, on the screen, you know, on the screen, geared to on the screen, you know, everybody knew what we were shooting and they knew what the audience was and they knew what the, you know, what, what the demographic was and why people were watching. And, and so for the, for the time that I was on the show, for the, for the time, for the time. And so for the time that I was on the show, it was, it was fun and it was a lark, but, um, you know, they needed to move on too. So I left and Billy left and Erica left and then they brought on, uh, Pamela and that's when it, it really jumped a shark. But, um, boy, it, it, it was a, a big show and it was, you know, it's fun to be a part of something that's, that's that iconic. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, can we discuss some of your films? Discuss some of your films. Some of them, I, I yeah. think I've only done uh, a couple. Well, but, let me tell you yeah, one one that really, <laughs> yeah, one that really, one that really intrigued. A couple. Well, but, let me tell yeah, you one one that really, whichever. yeah, one that really, one that really intrigued me was. Uh, well, but, let me tell yeah, you one one that really, one one that really. Well, let me tell you one that really. I've only done uh, a couple, but yeah, let's discuss whichever. <laughs> well, let me tell you one that really intrigued me was uh, Boyhood, Richard Linklater's Boyhood. And I know that that was shot. Right. He shot that over 10 or 12 years. And um, can, can you tell me what your involvement was with that project? It was so unique and what the shooting process was like. Yeah. Um... I uh, I got a call from my agent and they said like I uh, I got a call from my agent and they said you can yeah, what the shooting um, process shooting, um, pro shooting um, process was like I uh, process was like yeah i uh, i got a call from my age i got a shooting process was like yeah i got a call from my agent and they said that there's this movie that's being shot and it's richard linklater and i hadn't i wasn't terribly familiar with his work although i did watch um oh what was the one that he shot in the 70s that was Days and Confused, was it him? I can, I can take a look. Um, um, but um, 
So I knew I knew he had chops, but they. So I knew I knew he had chops. I wasn't terribly familiar with his work, although I did watch. So I knew I knew he had chops, but they. they and I hadn't. I wasn't terribly familiar. That's being shot, and it's Richard Linklater, and I hadn't. I was. So I knew I knew he had chops, but they they also said Richard Linklater, and I hadn't. Richard Linklater and I hadn't. So I knew I knew he had chops, but they they also said this film has been uh, chopped. Was the work? Although I did watch. Um, oh, what was the one that he shot in the seventies? That was Days and Confused. Was that him? I wasn't terribly familiar with his work, although I did watch, um, oh, what was the one that he shot in the 70s that was Days and Confused? Days and Confused? Was it? I wasn't terribly familiar with his work, although I did watch Days and Confused. I did watch Days and Confused? Was it him? Anyway. Um, um, but, um, so I knew, I knew. Although I did watch Days and Confused, so I knew I knew he had chops, but they watch Days and Confused. So I knew I knew he had chops, but they they also said this film has been uh, in production for seven years, and immediately I thought, oh Christ, this is just somebody's you know vanity project. If it's been shooting for seven years, it's not going anywhere. It's going to go straight to video, and um, sure, I'll audition. Sure, I'll video and sure I'll audition for it, you know. But there was zero pressure because I didn't know anything about the project. It was very hush hush while it was in production. Um, and so I was, and so I was, hush while it was in production. And so I went in for the audition um, and was very loose. Um, and we uh, improv a scene, and we and was very loose, and we uh, improv a scene, and was very loose, and we uh, improv a scene, um, uh, improv a scene, improv loose, and we improv a scene. Um, of a Coltrane, the 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 boy who played. Um, Ella Coltrane, the 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 boy who played the the boy, mm-hmm. um, uh, improved a scene. The 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 boy who played the 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 the, the boy who played the the boy the boy who trained. Ella Coltrane, the boy who played the the boy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, improved a scene and uh, it worked good and uh, improv the boy mm-hmm. um, improved a scene um, improved a scene and uh, it worked good and um, got a call that I had got a call that I had good and got a call that I had that I had gotten the role and uh, when we got the script, the script was very much the improv that got in the role. And uh, when we got the script, the script was very much the improv scene that we had done. <clears throat> um, and uh, I only shot. For- and. Uh, improv scene that we had done. And uh, I only shot for a day. Uh, they shot. They shot a day. They shot um, over twelve years, but they only shot me. 
they shot uh, over 12 years, but they only shot one week a year. So they did one over 12. They shot over 12 years, but they only shot one week a year. So they did one week of shooting, and then I think two weeks of pre-production, or maybe a week of post-production on on either side of that. Um, so everybody had to come. So everybody had to come. So everybody. production or maybe a week of post-production on, on either side of that. So everybody had to come back uh, every year for 12 years just for a week. Every year back, every, everybody had to come back, back, back. come back every year for 12 we had to come back every year for 12 years just for a week of shooting so it was a very uh tight shooting schedule you know uh it wasn't uh relaxed tight it was a very tight shooting schedule you know uh it wasn't uh relaxed at all because everybody knew they had to get the shots in in the week and then bang, you get the shot, then you move to the next scene, you get the shot, you move to the next scene. Uh, but excellent crew, um, and Richard is such a good director, you know, such a good director. And um, so we shot that scene, and so we shot so we shot that scene, and I don't. You've seen, have you seen the movie? I've only seen bits and pieces of it, and uh, I'm going to confess my ignorance here. I don't know if we we should leave this in. Maybe I will, but uh, I I was so intrigued by the idea of it, but I never got to see it in the theaters, and it was sporadically on cable, and I just seemed to miss it every time. So I still want to see it, and I think I've seen a couple of scenes, but now I'm not really versed in it. And I'm sorry, I just well, had, had I had a little it, bit more advanced, you know. Notice that I'd be interviewing yeah, you. I definitely I mean, would have watched it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. So don't worry about it. There, it's it's a, a really worthwhile project. I think there, it's it's a it's it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, a really worthwhile. Such a good director, and so we shot that scene. And I don't. You say, have you seen the? It's a. Such a good director, and it's a, a really worthwhile project. I think it's a, a worthwhile movie to watch. One of the things that's uh, so interesting about it is it's a, a really worthwhile project. I think it's a, such a good director, and it's a, a really worthwhile project. I think it's a, a worthwhile movie to watch. One of the things that's uh, so interesting about it is so in the things that's so interesting about it is. For me, to, you know, it's like trying to write down your life story. There's so much of you. What do you use to tell the story? And for Richard Linklater to have a boy's life, and you know, from the time he was six until the time he was 18, to use as fodder for this film, how you winnow that down to a cohesive narrative that goes from point A to point B, uh, I thought was just an incredibly uh, uh, Herculean task and uh, uh, incredibly Herculean task. And and I think he did a really good job, but the, the scene that I was in the scene, but the scene that I was in is in the middle of the movie. It's, it's a long scene and a short scene and, it's pretty much all me doing a monologue or a substantial chunk of the dialogue with Ethan or with Eller, um, substantial chunk of the dialogue with Ethan or with Eller, um, in a Eller with Eller, um, with Eller.
along with Eller um, in a dark room. And I'm in a dialogue with Eller in a dark room. And I'm giving him a lecture. I'm his photography teacher. And <clears throat> the scene is somewhat pivotal. The scene teacher. And the scene is somewhat pivotal because somewhat scene is somewhat pivotal because uh, he winds up becoming a he winds up pivotal because he winds up becoming a because he winds up becoming a photographer. Um, and uh, it was also one of those scenes that and uh, it was also one, it was also a photographer. And it was also one of those scenes photographer. And it was also one of those scenes that sort of photographer. And it was also one of those scenes that sort of distilled um, the plot of the movie, the plot, the plot of the movie. So it it became it it became the scene that was in. So it became the scene that was in every single commercial. Uh, for the movie and all the trailers for the movie, and then when it aired, uh, when it, when it was nominated for an Academy Award for the movie, and then when it aired, uh, when it, when it was nominated for an Academy Award at the awards, uh, it was the clip they showed. So it's it at the awards, uh, it was the clip they showed. So it's uh, it was the clip they showed. It was at the awards. It was the clip they showed. So it's it words. It was the clip they showed. So it's it and for for only being you know a three and a half minute segment of a two hour movie. Um, it got a lot of notice. And yeah, that must have been know? nice to and, see, uh, right? I was really proud of it. Yeah, I'm still proud of it to this day. That must have been nice to see, right? I was really proud of it. Yeah, I'm still proud of it to this day. I, I think it, I think that it really holds up well, and um, yeah, and and you know, and it, yeah, and, um, yeah, and and you know, and it was, it's one of those things that it just felt so lucky to be involved in, and I don't think that I, uh, you know, I don't know how chances like that, and I don't think that I, uh, you know, I don't know how chances like. You know, I don't know. So lucky to be involved in. You know, I don't know how chances like that happen to people. Um, but it's nice to. But it's nice. Happen to people. But it's nice to to have an opportunity to. You know, you 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 butt your head, you bang to have an opportunity to. To have an opportunity to. Uh, you know, you 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 butt your head, you bang your head against the door for years, and you 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 butt your head, you bang your head against the door for years, bang your head. You know, you 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 bang your head against the door for years in Hollywood, and then after you know a couple of decades, um, you move to Texas. You move to te you know, a couple of decades. You move to Texas because you know things are slowing down and that's where you want to be and all of a sudden you're you're handed a a, a, a plum role in an academy award nominated film and it's, it's i feel lucky i feel lucky oh but it's i feel lucky right, and so it's, it's a good luck well i mean you also had the good luck to appear with george clooney and Shane Woodley and Bo Bridges in 2011. Uh, the movie was called The Descendants. Lucky. Right, and so it's a good luck. Well, I mean, you also had the good luck to appear with. Lucky. 
Right, and it's a, it's a good luck. Well, I mean, you also had the good luck to appear with George Clooney and Shane Woodley and Bo Bridges in 2011. Uh, the movie was called The Descendants, and that was set in Hawaii. And I guess you just can't get out of uh, those tropical <laughs> paradises, huh? Well, that's interesting that you bring that up. Because paradises, huh? Well, that's interesting that you bring that up because I was not in the descendants. I have a distant cousin named Tom McTee. Oh, are you kidding me? In Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. No, it I am the worst so interviewer on the planet. <laughs> uh, it's, it's okay, man. He, he listed himself as Tom McTeague, and because I'm a SAG actor, uh, anytime anybody says my name's Tom McTeague, it immediately it shoots comes up to my a picture. IMDB. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so it's uh, yeah, that wasn't mine. I actually got all of his checks. That's good. That <laughs> and I and I had to look him up. I go, hey, Tom McTeague. Yeah, you don't know me, but this is Tom McTeague, and uh, I got your checks. So uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, all right, I, I might not. Checks. I might not keep this in the uh, interview proper, but it's definitely making the blooper reel. So. Uh, sure. All right. So I guess so. So we can go on from there. I mean, um, well. I'll start from this point. Edit. That's pretty funny. Yeah, All right. I might not. Chat. I might not keep this in the uh, interview proper. Uh, those tropical paradise. Plum roll in an Academy Award nominated film. It's. I feel lucky. Right, and so it's, it's a good luck. Well, I mean, you also had the good luck to. I feel lucky. I feel lucky. Well, I know that you've done series. Academy Award nominated film. And it's, I feel lucky. Well, I know that you've done series. I know that you've done movies, but it seems to me that your heart is still in stand up. And I was doing my research on you. When I typed your name to Google, the autocomplete gave me options like Tom McTeague, Cat Puke, and Tom McTeague chicken pot pie. <laughs> so right. I can only assume those are bits. Do you care to elaborate? Well, the, the, yeah, I still do. I, I still do stand up. Um, uh, it's been a, a, a main. St right. Well, the, the, yeah, I still do. I still do stand up. Um, uh, it's been a, a, a mainstay of my professional life for, 35 years and uh, I still love performing, you know, so I, I work in Vegas a couple of times a year and uh, uh, I work on cruise ships uh, and occasionally I'll do a, a club here or there, but um, yeah, the cat puke, the cat puke bit is it, it, that and, and uh, I can't remember the other bit. Oh, the chicken pot pie, chicken pot pie. hell's angels. And, yeah, there's a CD that I have uh, in fairly uh, regular rotation on uh, Sirius XM. So, um, I guess, so, Sirius XM. So, um, I guess the, the, those are the, I guess the... XM. So, Sirius XM. So... I guess the, the, those are the those are the bits that that people remember and Google and want to buy, and so um, that's why those those pop up. But I'm still very active as a stand up. I read that you also do like corporate gigs. Can you tell us what what that's like? I do corporate gigs, but I do corporate gigs very rarely um, because there's a whole lot of um, 
what that's like? I do. Um, there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of dancing around early um, because there's a whole early um, because there's a whole lot of dancing around making sure that you're politically correct and that to me is sort of the anathema to stand up comedy um, and. Uh, I'm sure that there are clean, you know, um, and, uh, I'm sure and end up comedy and, uh, I'm sure that I'm sure and I'm sure that there are clean stand up comedy and I'm sure that there are clean, you know, PC comedians that would PC, there are clean PC comedians that would say, yeah, but the money's so good. Yeah, the money's really good, but I think it's more fun to be true to why I think that thing is funny than to go back and have to re-edit it so that, you know, margin accounting doesn't feel like I was acting (laughs) sexist, you know. know. And and so, um, I mean, my my stand-up is not particularly dirty, but it wasn't built uh, to be delivered in a PC environment. Uh, to be, but it wasn't built to be delivered in a, but it wasn't built to be delivered in a PC environment or a grade school, you know? So, um, yeah, it's an adult show built for adults. Yeah. It's an adult show built for adults. Gotcha. Uh, and it seems sometimes like corporate America is not populated by adults. Sometimes like corporate America is not populated by adults. So, <laughs> Well, having just uh, come out of a long career in corporate America, I'm, I'm finding a new way forward too. So uh, I, you're not, you're not entirely wrong on that, but all right. So let's, let's pick up from here. Um, so what are you doing yeah. these days? Well, having just uh, come out of a long career in corporate America, I'm, I'm finding a new way forward too. So, uh, I, you're not you're not entirely wrong on that. But, all right. So let's let's pick up from here. So what? <laughs> so what are you doing these days? Are you still acting? <laughs> so what are you doing these days? Are you still acting? Um, I I do act. I'm. Uh... Well, having just uh, come out of a long career in corporate America, I'm, I'm finding a new way forward too. So uh, I, you're not you're not entirely wrong on that. But all right, so let's let's pick up from here. Uh, so really wrong on that. So what are you doing these days? Are you still acting? Um, I, I entirely wrong on that. So what are you doing these? <laughs> well, having just. Uh, So what are you doing these days? Are you still acting? Um, I, I do act. I'm, uh, I stay. So what are you doing? So what are you doing? Not populated by adults. So, (laughs) so what are you doing these days? Are you still acting? Um, I, I do act. I'm, uh, I stay fairly busy doing these days. Are you still acting? Um, I, I do. Is you still acting? Um, I, I do act. I'm, uh, I stay fairly busy doing voiceover work. Um, I have a home studio, so, uh, I do voiceover work, at least the audition portion of that through my home studio. And, uh, I tour about 15 or 20 weeks a year, uh, doing stand up primarily on, on ships. Um, and then I've got the doing fifteen or twenty weeks a year doing stand up primarily. 
15 or 20 weeks a year doing stand up primarily on, on ships. Um, and then I've got this beautiful, and then I'm on, on ships and then I've got this beautiful, quiet life on ships. And then I've beautiful, quiet, and I've got this beautiful, quiet life with a great girlfriend and kids and, and, uh, you know, for the last week I've been gardening. So, uh, between stand up and voiceover and residuals and the occasional, uh, new acting role that comes along, uh, I stay as busy as I want to be. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I kind of like in my career these days to being a trapdoor spider, you know, I don't look very hard for work, but when it comes by, I snatch it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I did an American crime, an episode of America. Yeah, I'm, I did an American crime by a snatch it. So yeah, I'm, I did an American crime, an episode of American crime last year. And, and, uh, when things are available, I do them. There are friends here who produce, uh, you know, web series and webisodes and things like that. And uh, always happy to work with them. But it's not work. It's more, more fun. I got you. I got you. So is there anything that you would like to talk about that I haven't touched on that you want to, that, that you want to get the message out on or? No, just, I, <laughs> no, no. And this is between you I, and me. I just, I always, I like to give people an opportunity to talk about, you know, a pet project. Uh, feel free. Uh, not, I, I mean, not really. I'm, I'm really honored that people like the work that I've done. I, I, I mean, not really. I, I mean, not really. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really honored that people. I'm. Really, it's not work. It's more, more fun. I'm really honored that people like the work that I've done and and can be more fun. I'm really honored that people like the work that I've done and and continue to watch it and contact me about it and. and okay. uh, uh, it's been a it's been a fun career and it continues and nobody's more surprised about that than me maybe my dad but he passed away well, so can uh, can our yeah, fans it's, just, it's a great job can our fans find you anywhere online passed away well, so uh, yeah it's just it's a great job can our fans find you anywhere online anywhere online and things like that and uh, always happy to work with them. But it's not work; it's more more fun. I'm really honored that people like the work that I've done and and continue to watch it and contact me about it. And, and uh, uh, it's been a it's. Can our fans find you anywhere online? Uh, TomMcTeague.com. I'm currently rebuilding my site, so give me about two weeks before fix on that. <laughs> and, <laughs> online. Uh, TomMcTeague.com. I'm currently rebuilding my site, so give me about two weeks before anybody clicks on that. And, <laughs> uh, hopefully, they'll be able to pull up a, a page that doesn't look like it was built 20 years ago. Um, so, yeah, TomMcTeague.com, and they can... Uh, so, 20 years ago. So, yeah, Tom McTeague, So, yeah, TomMcTeague.com, and they can... Uh, Friend me on Facebook. Uh, they can find me on Twitter and Instagram. So I'm out there. I've got some something of a social media presence, but not a bunch. I don't. I don't uh, uh, work very hard. At, work at, uh, work very hard. At, which I don't. I don't uh, work very hard at maintaining that. Which seems to be the you know. I mean, if you get a million Twitter followers, you're a, a star. And if you don't. And you're not. So, um, yeah, have them follow me on Twitter. I think I got 500 followers right now. Right. <laughs> Maybe we'll get it up to 506. Uh, you know. uh, oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. There you go. There you go. Well, we'll put links for all of those uh, social media accounts and your website on the Quantum Leap Podcast website at quantumleappodcast.com. So everybody listening can check there. And Tom, before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to relate from your time on Quantum Leap? And do you have any messages for the leapers out there? You know what? Before I get to that uh, one, let me, let me ask you this and then I'll get, I'll get to that one. All right. So backing up, you had said before, I'll say it, I'll say it like this. Now if we can just get back. 
Now, if we can just get to once more. Now, if we can just get those uh, social media accounts and your website on the Quantum Leap Podcast website at quantumleappodcast.com. So everybody listening can check there. And Tom, before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to check there? And now, if we can just get back. And check there. And now, if we can just get back to Quantum Leap, if you don't mind, you had mentioned before that when you were on the show, it was, I guess, fairly popular, but it wasn't anything like it is now. Now, aside from the story that you told, can you relate instances where you have seen the show and your role on the show grow over the years? Seen the show and your role on the show grow in popularity over the years? I, I just know that uh, it's one of those television series that was good enough to stand the test of time, which is a huge um, compliment to any comp is a huge compliment to anything that happens on TV. Most of it uh, is, is so dated so quickly uh, for something to last as long as Quantum Leap has with a fan base, uh, for something so quickly, for something to last as long as Quantum Leap has with a fan base uh, as um, engaged and rabid as it engaged uh, as engaged and rabid as it's. Uh, as engaged and rabid as it is, uh, I think it's a huge testament to. I think it is. I think it's a huge testament to the quality of that of that show. It was well written, well conceived, and uh, uh, really well executed. So kudos to everybody involved in it, and the fans for recognizing that. Well, thank you very much, Tom, for spending time with us here on the Quantum Leap Podcast. Fans for recognizing that. Well, thank you very much, Tom, for spending time with us here on the Quantum Leap Podcast. My pleasure. Thanks so much. All right. I think we got it. Um, Hi, Chris. Like I, said, I hope that did for you what you wanted it to. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, it, it's perfect. We love talking about the Leap Podcast. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Too. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, it, it's perfect. We love talking to anyone that was involved with the show, so I'm just, I'm, I'm happy that we're me as far as uh contacting and all that uh it's been a hell of a week this work week has just kicked my ass so it's nice to finally put all that crap away and talk to somebody about something i really love you know and uh, good <laughs> I, re- I highly recommend gardening that's, i've been gardening all week oh uh, it's it's as uh, soon as yeah, it stops as soon as it stops raining here in new york it, it just started to hit the low 50s and the crocuses just came out oh, two geez. days ago. So, yeah, we're not in Texas, you know. <laughs> oh, right. no, I hear you. Yeah. So. Well, listen. Have a have a good time with with your editing on this, and and uh, send me a send me an email when you know when it's going to air. And what's your listenership like on this podcast? You oh, know? I, you know, at this point, uh, we've been on for so long that I know that we have you know tens of thousands of downloads, um, if not more. I'm not quite sure because I haven't looked at it in got over a year i could try to figure it out and get back to you but i know that there is a steady fan base that listens all the time we have a lot of downloads and and people because they love the show there aren't any other quantum leap podcasts anyway they weren't until very recently i think we're now one of three and one of those is behind a paywall so where else are people gonna go you know we got like a captive audience almost so so yeah, anybody that wants Quantum Leap has found us. Is the way I look at it. Good. Yeah. Well, thanks for including me, and hopefully uh, it it, uh, um, it pleases the fans. Oh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. And when I get done editing this, I'll send you a clean MP3 just so that you can listen back, and uh, I'll give you a heads up when I know which show it's going to be on and when it'll drop. All right. Terrific. Thanks so much, Chris. All right, Tom. You have a good day, all right? You too. Take care. Bye.
Tom, welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, you played... Tom, welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast. Thanks for having me. Tom, welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast. Thanks for having me. Thanks for recognizing that. Well, thank you very much, Tom, for spending time with us here on the Quantum Leap. And the fans for recognizing that. Well, thank you very much, Tom, for spending time with us here on the Quantum Leap Podcast. My pleasure. Thanks so much.